nice and tidy edited down video, but I have ways for you to make it faster. You can click that little gear on the YouTube settings right there on the video and adjust the playback speed, make me sound like a chipmunk, and it'll go a lot faster. You can also look and see if there's timestamps for this project in the description. And if you're on a desktop, you can hover over the time bar at the bottom of the screen and see if it's chunked up into chapters. And then that way you can go directly to the step you're looking for. And lastly, you can also tap on the screen on the right hand side of the video picture or on the left hand side to make the video jump ahead forward or backward if you're on a mobile device. And you can adjust that amount in your settings so you can have complete control over how much it jumps. So if you are on a desktop, you can use the fast forward or the rewind and that will make it fast go faster as well. You can also enable subtitles and the little CC on the screen will enable closed captioning. That way, if I am a little bit harder to understand with that double playback speed, the subtitles might help you out. All right, well, I know that it's not a nice little edited video, but if you sew with me, we'll get there together and it'll be lots of fun. And now for the live stream. Happy sewing. Hello. <laughs> Sorry, I was a little late. I was trying to get my new camera to work again. I got a new cord and it still does not see my cam, my new camera. It's kind of, a, it's such a bummer. How are you all? You had a hard time getting this one today? <laughs> Hi, Hannah. Hi, Shim. Hi, Hillary. Hey, Sue. Hey, Terry. Hey, Margaret. Well, I'm glad you did figure it out. All right, so we are making the Arbor shirt. Let's make this a little smaller. Can you still read this? Like, how small can I go? I want it to be like, not this weird distraction, but also, you know, maybe I could put it to the side. <clears throat> Is that better? <laughs> Hello, Raquel. Hi, Anna. I was just thinking about you the other day. It's rainy. It sounds delightful. All right, a little, a little bright, huh? I don't really like this here. I'm gonna put it back there. Ah, summer's like that. You either have more time or less time. It's kind of funny. It's like, oh, I can't, can't wait for my kids to be out of school. It's such a hassle. And then they're home, and you're like, wait. I guess I did have some free time. Do you like the left side or the right side for that? Is there a delay with my audio? Oh man, this is just bright. Let's just, let's just tone things down a little bit. Busy, busy summer. Wait, I'm doing this one? Oh, I thought I was doing my face cam. That's funny. Hi Amy, how's it going? This is my face. Oh yeah, I have that white shirt on, so it's really zoomed in too. <clears throat> Get away from me. <laughs> there we go. Okay, you like the right better? Okay, let's put it over there. Yeah, because I feel like everything past the needle, we could even do this, right? Oh, that didn't change much. Maybe I should have leave, leave that. There we go. <laughs> exactly. Oh, I remember it would take me like, like a couple of weeks of planning out the summer, you know? And then it was like, it was like a military precision. <laughs> Hi, Sydney. How's it going? All right. Let's look over the directions. I'm going to try and go in the order. I've been a little bit less on the instructions and then, you know, I end up having to pull them out all the time. I just hate these huge things though. I used to have a little method when I used to only sew patterns that had instructions like this. 
where I would fold it a certain way. Not like, it wouldn't be a book. Oh, and then they go across the top. That's interesting. Okay. We did that. Front. Okay, so we're going to finish this little um, front area here. And... Wait. If you do that... If you fold along a fold line... The fold edge to the notch only. Oh, I see. It probably leaves out, leaves that little edge free. I'm like, wait, that's not going to work. Okay. Because mm -mm -mm, you have to be able to turn this under this edge here. Then we do our pockets. Um, then we attach the pockets. Let's just get a little. I usually make like a little um, cheat sheet. We do the flap. Is this five eight? All of it's five eight. Then we do our yoke. Okay. Usually I make myself a cheat sheet, but I was trying to install that camera. Donna, hey, how's it going? Oh yeah, exactly, Shim. That'll be. Uh, that makes it go fast. Hi, Aisha. How's it going? But yeah, once you get another routine. Oops. Then we go to here. Top stitch. What are they doing with this? Oh my gosh, they are sewing this yoke the old school way you did in a big four pattern. This is literally how you used to have to do it. This is the instructions they'd give you. Turn it under and top stitch it. Who cares what it's gonna look like on the outside, right? This is why I just did, like, did my little taco method. That's funny. Um, sleeve. Sleeve and then sleeve on. Okay. Okay. Let's get going. We've got this all in order here. And there's my fronts here. We're going to somehow applique. Oh, I didn't thread my machine. <laughs> I didn't thread my machine yet. Wait. Where's that thread? I thought we got the thread out yesterday. Here it is. I'm going to use this stuff. This is the Mara 70. So it's a little bit thicker. It's either that or I usually use two strands of thread because I just like the way that looks. But we'll just use this. You start school at 823. Hi, hi, Julie. Hi, Derek. Wait, that's a different... Uh, Weather report than yesterday, dang. That's like a um, big difference. Okay, I think I have a white bobbin on. So after the stream yesterday, um, I finished my prep for my skill building session. Um, and then I, um, I fixed, oh, I hemmed my dad's shirts, but then I spent an hour taking out the whole fly of those cargo shorts to fix them. So, you know. Oh, that's cool, Donna. All right, so let's see. Our fold line is right here, right? So if this was our fold line, what do we want to do? Do we want this like, like at the top there? Do we want it like this? I feel like the stripe looks better lower, right? So let's, um, I'm gonna clip this little fold line here. I feel like it's up higher, but we're gonna clip that right there. And right here. We do always a lot of seam ripping when we first start sewing, so let's see what, what's gonna happen here. Hi, Suzanne. We won't tell. Oh, I could do it. That's an interesting idea. Hmm. Do we think he'll like this? Let 
Let's just do a little, um, I was gonna say role playing. <laughs> Let's just do a little role playing on this shirt. <laughs> Here's my shirt front, right? Here's my, my, my flap. So what I was thinking was, was hiding it. Like it was gonna be right here, right? Like, like right down here but the flap was gonna cover it up. And then you'd see it when you lift the flap up. That's, that's what I was thinking, right? But I like your idea. Right, so it's like this and like this. <clears throat> hmm. Hmm. What about an inset? This is what it looks like up close, everybody. It's got these red and blue stripes. The camera is having difficulty picking up on all the Short sleeve shirts, nice. Get back to sewing. <laughs> My, um, the zipper from, yes, the zipper from the menu pants. The, the, the snap where you put the button closure is centered right over a seam. And so then when I did it, I biased the snap, but I ended up accidentally not meeting where the center front is. So there, it's just too big on him. I had taken out an inch in those pants. And then I added it right back by not getting the waist properly sewn on there. So I popped off the snap, the top half, and then the under one's still on the fly shield. So <clears throat> I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to just re-sew it from scratch. The zipper is too, the zipper tape is too wide for this. It's, it's like it was intended for a dress with zipper, but it required a brass zipper which have wider tapes do usually so you'd put it on the flap I'm not sure how prominent I want this to be so I'm going to put this as a little hanging loop from the center back yoke seam we can't forget to do that this is on the inner collar stand Kind of like this idea is doing it diagonal, you know, like it's also not centered. So whatever I do, hi Mullen, whatever I do is going to look asymmetrical. What are you trying to say, Shim? You're not, are you saying my guy isn't youthful? Well, <laughs> down the side of the pocket, hmm. Hmm. Not sure. Let's um do this. What if I put it on me? Sorry, it covers my microphone. I've got somewhat of a fuller chest than him. I feel like from far away, this this vertical placement, I really like this, I, but I don't think this is the right trim for that. Um, it's so, you're not gonna see what it is, it's gonna, just gonna look like a white stripe, you know what I mean? I think I'll put it on the top of the pocket. Probably gonna disappoint some of you. Um, if we put, if we do that, and we have our flap here, I mean, you know, another idea is what if it was like a little, 
loop hanging out of the flap like that. Or what if, <laughs> If it was something that stuck out from the side of the pocket, that's all it was. Just something really subtle. Like, here, let me just cut off a little piece here. Like something like this. about something like that. It's kind of classy. It could also be like this. <laughs> you can chat, Shem. Shem, you've got to know you're going to be the most teased. It wouldn't let you post a comment. Oh, how weird. You were all in timeout. Corner of the pocket. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, there's something with that. We could do something with the corner. Something like, are you all in timeout? Like this. It's acting funny for you guys, huh? Is there a big event streaming on YouTube today? God, did the Barbie movie finally drop? <laughs> I literally thought the Barbie movie had been out for two weeks. I'm trying to look at the what, how the stream says. It says excellent connection. I wonder if it's some sort of YouTube thing. The bold vertical stripe was high contrast and looked very streetwear. That's what I meant by youthful. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's definitely, I kind of want to put an inset, you know, like slice down the middle, Terry, and like just slow it in there. But the asymmetry of it is kind of tough because I didn't really give myself much fabric for seam allowance, you know, that if I wanted to use it, because I think like using part of the fabric, you could actually have some fun. Like what if it was equal chambray and um, muslin on each side, right? Not muslin, but it's not, Sydney. It's not out yet. <laughs> it's not, there's not, you know, that's weird. I feel like sometimes I do notice issues when there's like huge things streaming. Hmm. I, I think my favorite right now is this, is like the little tag to the side. Let's, let's put this in our pocket. Something like that. Something smaller like that. Um, I think I liked the vertical stripe the best, like this. I think I like that. I have a little bit. I had to get all the actor promos done before Sag Strike, that's true. It comes out tomorrow. <laughs> oh, cool, Mullen. Yeah, I think this. Oh, and then the other thing I was showing you guys was the the little like loop here sticking out of the flap. I'm not sure I'll do buttons and buttonholes. You know, I think I'll just leave them undone. Do you think that's weird? The good news is if you're, you know, you're doing the button and buttonhole, the buttonhole goes on the flap, so you can kind of think about it and not do it. 
vertical stripe tab. Okay, let's do that. Now, how are we gonna sew this? <laughs> the other, the other conundrum. So, um, let's clean off a piece here. And I think I'm gonna have to, let's see, we're gonna have to do something like this, right? So, all right, so I just cut a piece that's, it's three inches long. And I wanted to do this. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sew this in a, um, the bottom of it, basically. I'm gonna trim off this little edge here because it is a, I don't want there to be a ridge in the seam allowance. So we'll just cut that off. I'm gonna put my back stitch back on so I don't pull it apart. Now I'm gonna turn it right side out, but I'm gonna press the seam open right here. They are Elena the Cool. Oh, for like the like premieres. Maybe you put it on the, you know, the back and the front. Of the, oh, at the hem, I love that idea. Okay, I gotta remember all these things. We might have, I might have to make myself a note. Okay, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna center the seam like this, just back there. So then it's, it's like clean here and there. And then now we're gonna fold it in half. Do we want, we don't have a choice. <laughs> we don't have choices here. What am I thinking? Okay, there we go. So that's it. That's what we ended up with. Let me just st stitch this closed. No, no hate on the Barbie lovers either out there. Like I'm just, I just thought it was out. Sorry, is your okay machine? What ridge in the seam? Yes, it's an 8700. It's an 8700 dash seven. It's, it's kind of a big difference because uh, it does this. It does the auto back tack. And I have a video on that. Uh, if you go to the playlists on my channel um, and you search, uh, if, I think if you search on YouTube, Juki Maintenance So So Live, you'll find it. Our show to me refers to the highest point of the rise with the sight seam gussets. So that both starting to stretch. Wait, what? Oh, at the union of the back and the front, at the hem. Yeah. Yeah, no problem, Laurel. Um, yeah, I'm not doing a vent. But that's such a good thing. Yeah, I, I like to reinforce the top of a vent. This one is a, it's a straight hem, no vent on the sides. But you could, I could put it just like right here, right? I could put it on either side. That'd be kind of cool. We're going to have it right here at the back neck. This is where the selvage is going to be right here. We're going to have a little pop out of the pocket. And we're going to have one um, right, we're going to have a little loop at the center back yoke. Okay. Let's, um... What did I say was the first thing we need to do is our placket. So let's, let's get back to that. Let's move this piece here, here. We've got this ready to go now. Let's not lose it. It's really cute. <laughs> All right. All right, so we're gonna fold this on the fold line, which is where the interfacing goes up to. And we're gonna stitch from the fold to the notch right here. Do not go further. All right, this does not look like the picture though, I will say. So I'm gonna keep this straight. I would fold this for a good distance. Don't just fold it right here and do this, okay? You'll have problems. So make sure that you, Make sure you have a nice, you know, straight fold for a little bit. And we're only going to sew up to the notch, which I can't really see. Uh, is it really five-eighths of an inch here? 
It is, isn't it? I, well, oh, did it help, Julie? I'm glad. I know it, was, it wasn't like a structured video, you know? It was the um, Zoom, right? <laughs> One point four centimeters from the raw edge is the stay stitch. So it is it's like a five eighths inch seam allowance. Wow. Wow, I would normally turn that down. And we're gonna go up to here. I didn't do a stay stitch, but I have the um interfacing here. Alright, so I went a stitch past it. So I'm going to take that one stitch out and I'm going to re-back stitch. But here's my notch. We're just stitching like that. And then um, we're going to do it on uh, both sides. And then we're going to trim this little corner right here. Right? And then we're going to turn it. And now you're going to fold under. Is that really how this goes? I just don't believe that. <laughs> you need to, oh yeah, we need to clip it, sorry. You need to clip down to the seam at the notch, like that. We can even trim this all the way down, right? So this is what it's looking like, like this. This is such a wide placket. Don't want gaping, you just make a mile wide placket. All right, and so see how this points up like this? And so now you're supposed to turn this under at the other fold line there and stitch it down. So it's gonna look like that. So we're gonna do the other side and then we're gonna iron it and then we're gonna stitch it down. So, all right, so we're gonna put this, fold it on the fold line here. And we're gonna stitch to the notch, which is right here. I need to, it's my stitch length is really long. That's why I keep miss going past this notch here. There's not very many stitches. <laughs> Clip straight down to the sewing at that notch. I'm just gonna trim this away and trim the little corner there. And now we're gonna go to the iron. We have another skill building session coming, Julie, on that. I think it's uh, next month. No, uh, I'm sorry. Next month is one pattern, many styles. But the following month, I'm pretty sure, is another uh, fabric thing like that. And so I think it'll be a good follow-up. So if you have questions, you can start. And make, make sure when I post the, what do you want me to cover, you, an, you know, answer what you want. All right, so you know, push this seam allowance up, straight up there. And now we're gonna see how there's this little angle right here. That's the seam allowance to turn this under. It's very big. <laughs> so I'm gonna do it from this side so I can make sure I keep it nice and parallel so I can see it. All right, and now we're gonna press this again. Look how wide that thing is. Cool. I sort of think if you wanted an interesting look, like we haven't, there's no right or wrong side to my fabric, but um, what if you stitched it with the fold on the right side like this? I think that look, could look kind of cool, especially since there's no tuck on this shirt, like for the placket. That's kind of an interesting um, thing to think about. You can kind of have fun with plackets that way because of um, the fact that 
it's completely finished thing. What is this right here on my ironing board? What is that? Huh. Everything. <laughs> Well, that's why I ask because it's you can prioritize things, right? You can always ask me questions no matter what we're talking about. But in that, you know, you can prioritize something like let's I just want to know anything about knits. I don't care about anything else. <laughs> Have you? Yeah, it's not an uncommon way to do it. It's definitely strange. Um, wouldn't be my first choice. It gets the job done, but finishing this little edge here and then now your collar has to enclose this, it kind of creates that issue that I know you guys don't like, like uh, where the sewing, you know, like when you're sewing a camp collar and you have that join at the shoulder where the front is clean finished and the back is a different little spot and you get that little raw edge right there at the shoulder. This is, this is the danger with this kind because it's kind of a hybrid like camp collar, it's a collar without a stand. So you have to have the extension, you can't go here, otherwise your collar will overlap and it'll look funkorama. So, there you go. I'm trying to start off really slow today because I feel like we always do like some major thing and I have to majorly seam rip <laughs> right off the bat, you know? The quality of the image is low, the, this, the video, Hmm, maybe refresh. Yeah, some, something is definitely up with YouTube today, huh? So what do we think? Do we want the placket on the outside? Or do we want it on the inside? It gives it kind of a softer look. Yeah, a denim jacket would be done like this. Uh, yeah, because that's a, um, a rolled collar without a stand. So what I'm thinking is you could actually, you have so much space in this placket, it's so huge, that you could do two rows of stitching down the um, front. At least on the, the one that's on the top. You don't have to do all that on the under one if you don't want. And we talked about doing, you know, um, you know, this placket, a decorative thing on your under placket too. Yeah, there. you know what it is here. I'll soften the sharpness. I, I kick up the sharpness so you can see detail better, but watch, I can, um, I can pull it back down. It'll be a little better. It's because the weave is so small. This is what my cameras look like without me changing anything. <laughs> I like the fold on the outside too. I think I'm gonna do that. <clears throat> All right, so we're just gonna, and, I, and, you, and now you get to see where you're stitching. It's always nice, right? Hey Martina, how's it going? Outside, all right. I think my latency isn't low enough today too because there's a bit of a, diff, bit of a time lag between me asking you something. <laughs> I probably need to wait more. So I hold it behind and in front of the machine. I hold it, and this will help prevent any drag lines on your placket. If you've ironed everything and it's all nice and straight, that will help. This is huge. We're gonna add some top stitching on this thing. So this is gonna get the collar. Maybe I'll wait to do this. Huh. I'm gonna do another, I don't know, what do you guys think? Two rows and two rows? This is the under placket, so let's do more on this one. Yeah, the gray, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's the same with denim. The backside of denim is really hard for me on camera, those really fine lines of the twill. 
The camera does not like that. Streaming, yeah, exactly, Raquel. I'm streaming, I'm not um, uploading in 4K. <laughs> exactly. All right, so I don't like how big this placket is. It's so huge. <laughs> if you wanted to make it smaller, like narrower, like I think inch and a half is a really wide placket. It kind of has a cool workwear thing, but any buttons you're going to put on here are going to look a little small. Um, and guys typically don't like big buttons. Women wear really big buttons. Men wear really tiny buttons. And so you put little tiny buttons on here, it's going to swim. It's a one and a half inch wide placket. So I think like I would probably make it one inch at the narrowest and you would just shave off a quarter of an inch off this fold and a quarter of an inch off this turned under edge and you would be narrower. <laughs> I really want to stitch a, down here. I'm trying to anticipate if I put my collar on here, it's clean finished. That seam allowance is going to go into the collar. But what I could do is top stitch this edge, go around and then go up onto the collar and do the top stitching. That look, could look kind of cool. If I did another row here, two rows here, what do we think? four rows. I think so. I think there's an oversized feel to it. I'm really struggling with the top stitch. I'll just think about it. <laughs> I'll think about it. Let's do our pockets. Okay. We got plenty of time. Do I have four flaps? You guys, did I cut four flaps? I didn't, did I? I don't think I did. I think I only cut two. Let's cut two more. <laughs> Remember, I don't think I cut four. So let's just cut two more here. It's funny. Um, this is going to be actually really interesting because my thumb is so weird right now that using scissors is kind of an adventure. Oh, this isn't bad. This is fine. Maybe it's just my really big ones. I was using my really big ones and I was like, oh yeah, I can't do that. This is fine. That's what I was thinking, Martina. That's why I want the double row. I think it'll make it more proportional. I don't mind exaggerating the width though. You know, like that's kind of a cool look. Ooh. Oh, I grabbed the grain there and it went a little lower. All right. Cut four. <laughs> we know that. I need to turn on my fan too, by the way, second. It's going to be hot today, just like it is every day. All right. So do we really think this is a 5 8 inch seam allowance? So that means this is going to be, there's no way. Um, my buttons aren't very big. <clears throat> um, they didn't grade the pocket, so so if you use the full seam allowance, you're gonna get a really small pocket on that big size. Yeah, I. Don't think I'm going to use the seam allowance that they say. That would make this pocket flap five inches wide. And the, the pocket itself, 
Hmm. Four and three quarters. Uh oh. <laughs> no, Julie. <laughs> All right, let's go and uh, iron this down. <laughs> Why is it stuck to your iron? I'm like scared to ask. <laughs> what is this all on my iron here? Oh, there's stuff on my ironing board that looks like oil. I don't set things on here because, you know, it's my ironing board. Do you think you do this? Hmm. I'm going to do a narrow seam or hem because my experience with if you do buttons and buttonholes is that they never make the hem wide enough to receive the button. So if you do a snap, you end up doing the snap on one layer of fabric and that is just not okay. Like that's just not going to really work out. You have to reinforce it and you didn't think that when you're sewing it so now you're putting this weird reinforcement on the back of your pocket you know what I mean you know what I mean exactly and it wasn't graded so um, that is gonna be a really small pocket on an upper size I got a little bit of torquing there. I, I should probably do this from the right. Ooh, I did really good. Look at that. I did this from this side. Proud. Um, okay, so I'm putting it on that right there. I'll push it a little bit, that top layer a little bit so it doesn't torque as much. That one I didn't get quite in the right, in the same spot. Look at that. Hmm. Do I want that narrower? It looks the same width. That's the crazy thing. All right. Let's do our flap. You ironed it. <laughs> so I think I'm going to do, let's see. If I do quarter inch seams, it's going to be barely over five inches. So I'm going to do quarter inch seams because I, I don't really have much choice otherwise right now. Whoops, I'm a little far there. The directions of the buttonhole. Um, I don't know. That's a good question. I would assume they'd be vertical because you would want the pocket flap to be able to, you know, lift, like move around like this with whatever was in your pocket. And if you did a horizontal buttonhole, it might pull, like pull open and not look good. But I, I haven't looked. I'm trying to see a picture right now. They're vertical in the line drawing. That, I think that would be the proper way to do it. It would be the proper way to do it. I'm not saying I think, it, it, it would be. <laughs> it sounds like I'm about to run out of bobbin. That's why I'm a little suspicious right now. Yeah, I don't think you would want to iron those things either because of the synthetics. Synthetics can't take high heat. So hopefully you can get it off your iron and it'll be okay. I'm going to reinforce this little corner since I just had to trim that or because I went one stitch back. And I'm just going to reinforce it right there. And now we're going to turn this rasad. 
out. You know, actually, um, you know what's kind of a fun thing to do? I, I, I'm sure you guys have all seen this trick, but let's just do it since this fabric will be really easy to do it on. I did this recently for a, a, a pocket on something, not something I sewed on camera, but I really wanted it to be perfectly symmetrical. And so I sewed them together first, right? I wonder what pocket that was that I did that on. I'm gonna line up this top really perfectly. I'm not going to backstitch. We're just gonna sew it together. If you really want it to be perfectly symmetrical, draw your seam line on the, the, um, pat, the piece here. Even if you just did it with like a, a hair marker, which doesn't leave a mark, right? All right, and so now let's go over to the iron. LCK, who's that? And so now what I do is press the, like I can press the seam open or press it to the side. If you press it open, if I can get this tiny little pocket on here, you're, you're actually gonna be pressing the seam allowance down in a way, but you're, you're not gonna be able to do the whole thing, right? So I'm just gonna do the sides. I did lengthen the stitch. I just put a basting stitch on. I just didn't say so, sorry. I didn't back stitch either. The other thing I did it on recently, um, I turned it like this. I pressed it perfectly like this, just as if I was making like a little bag, right? I need a, a second all over here. I thought I put a second all over here. Seam a little dangerous. <laughs> this is really helpful for things like angled pockets because it's really easy to get your angles um, asymmetrical. Because when you go around your pocket, when you come around like this, you're gonna get this angle different than right here. Like you're gonna pivot on this spot, probably in line with this corner, but I guarantee when you come down here and you're going at it like this, you're gonna pivot with it at a different spot. You're not gonna pivot at it directly at a right angle from the point. And so that's why it's really good to either draw it on there. And then on top of that, when you come down here, this angle you're coming at from a different one than there. It's, it's like, well, let me, let me elaborate. So if this was the mirror image to this one here, you are coming at this little point as if you came across at this point, because this is the cross, the straight grain, cross grain area, and this is at an angle. And so you won't pivot in the same point as both of your angles, so then your pocket won't be symmetrical. It's like a weird little, it's just a human thing we do, the way we approach it and where we think the pivot point is. So, um, and it just takes knowing, like when you make mistakes over and over, you're like, why do I keep making this mistake? And then you really analyze it and then you figure it out. <laughs> All right, and so now, here, you can actually iron it better than this too. It's not a bag pocket. <laughs> I'm just doing a little demo of how to get your pockets symmetrical. So now I'm gonna take out this stitch right here that I put in. It's gonna be stubborn near this thickness right here, but the rest of it will be really easy. What I did recently, whatever I was sewing on was thick um, and a curve that was a curved pocket. Those are, it's really great for curved pockets. Oh, it was my, oh no, it wasn't my Ankara. I thought it was my Ankara dress, but I did that on camera. Um, what was it that I did it on? It's kind of amazing that I can forget what I just sewed. <laughs> you can 
iron some polyester. You can iron some synthetic. You cannot iron all synthetics. Some have a lower melting point than others. I'm, you know, perfect example is how you can seam seal a waterproof garment. They use a 220 degree uh, heat roller to apply the seam tape. It's not hot enough for your home iron to do. I think it's 220 degrees. That might be something else. Um, it has to be like the perfect temperature to do it. All right, almost done. Get past this little thick area. I have the cutest little trash can right here. Isn't that cute? <laughs> My autofocus is on his nose. All right, so now you pull these apart and you have this perfect little pressed edge. Sorry, just flew my pocket away. Now I don't usually press un under my pocket edge when I sew, when I attach pockets. So this is a lot of extra for me, but um, I love the result this gives. Cause you usually see me eyeball it. I just push it under as I sew. I only pre-iron the hem. And now you have two identical pockets. All right, let's do the... Now's a good time, Sydney. Did you sign up for the Brabby? It's happening soon. Aisha and Libby are the two that come to mind in the guild that have done a lot. And then you can join the lingerie group in the guild. So you see these little edges, you want them right on the edge, right? So I, this is what I'm doing. I'm pushing it past, there's the seam. And then that I push hard when I pull it toward me. And that kind of just rolls the fabric away from the seam and getting it right on the edge there. So I, this fabric is great for this. Some fabrics just never roll in your fingers. They're too textured. They just get hung up on each other. I really need it. something to turn things with over here, not that seamer burn. All right. This is a very lightweight fabric. Feels really nice. For all the sewing fun. Thanks, Terry. Yeah, of course, Hillary. I know, it's kind of fun to do it this way. All right. So, I was right that my Feel it. Maybe I found the limit of my hair marker. This fabric is a little too busy up close for it. <laughs> yeah, right? That's true, Shim. I'm going to mark this. I think I really just did miss my bin there. I'm gonna mark this other pocket right now. I, I, I'm more of a believer of getting one pocket on there and then using that pocket to mark the other because, you know, symmetry. But we'll try. Okay, and uh, I was doing it on the other side originally. That's why my pins are upside down here. All right, so I'm gonna top stitch my flap. I 
I don't want to lose this I, or forget it. I love that this is, you know, I feel like this, um, like some of the little details Raquel's been bringing up, I feel like this it would, that would, those details would look really good. Like if there's like a railroad stripe denim, you know, that'd be really cool. One row or two rows. I have my basting stitch on. It looks really good. <laughs> Whoops. Do it from the inner facing side. I make a mistake with my basting stitch on these flaps. I think I'm going to do one row. Are you guys going to say one? Yeah. What a cute way to rip a pocket. What? What? <laughs> oh, you mean for the kids? Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, let's put our pocket on here. So I think I'm actually going to center it between this edge and maybe the seam allowance is probably right here. So maybe that is somewhat seamer. Ugh. That's a small area. <laughs> I don't think he's going to like these pockets. I have a feeling. It's very close to the placket. Look at that. I'm more concerned with being parallel here than uh, anything else. So height wise, and then let's make it parallel on this side. So I was thinking I would do this little decorative thing coming out the, the front edge of the pocket, but now I'm kind of thinking it's going to have to go on this, the farther side, you know? Should I do this on the right front or the left front? Right front or left front? Oh, wait, uh, we're going to do it on the left front. It's going to go, it's going to button that way. That's gonna look cool. I did, but only, I, I did a quarter of an inch. Yeah, I know, but still. That'd be a really small pocket if I didn't. Do you think I should make the pocket smaller? Um. Yeah, yeah, what Terry said, Jackie. Yeah, if you go into the guild on the left side, um, there's a place called Navigating the Guild. And it's a ton of like really short little videos. Some of them are a little longer, but they're like three minutes, four minutes. And they kind of give you the gist. I'm gonna do the classic, just triangle. And I'm gonna, um, I'm just gonna get rid of all these pins right now. because I wanna, I wanna force this little turn back thing down into the pocket. This is such a long stitch for top stitching. <laughs> but it really shows up. <laughs> You ever look at some of the commercially made bags and things or commercially things like that maybe aren't things you're going to use again, like a plastic bag that holds your, your sheets that you buy, right? And you see how many stitches per inch they use and it's like literally like four stitches in one inch. They're, they're so long. <laughs> the stitches are like a quarter of an inch long. <laughs> Can you imagine how fast that machine must go at that kind of stitch length? Because that's the thing. Like, if you want your machine to go faster, uh, lengthen the stitch. You know, if you're like, I got to get these curtains hemmed for this play that they're going to throw away afterward, and I need to do a lot, and it's got to be fast, lengthen the stitch. <laughs> the fabric's going to be 
going away from you so fast. Oh no, Amy. <laughs> the sewing fairy was like, all right, lady, I do I really need to run the bobbin out to tell you <laughs> you're doing something wrong here? <laughs> Drastic measures. <laughs> The pockets look smaller. They do, don't they? But that might be a much bigger shirt because they didn't grade the pocket. It's one pocket for all sizes. So this is this this is the um, this is the smallest size, and I made this pocket a quarter of an inch bigger around. And I am fine with this decision still. But you may want it. A little bigger. Okay. I'm gonna line my pocket up. It's barely the, covering the width of my pocket. And now I'm gonna trim this edge. I always trim with the trim side under the garment, meaning. I do it this way, right? This is the piece I'm trimming, so it's on the bottom. Rather than this, because you could trim this little this little part right here. We don't want that to happen, right? So, um, all right, and now I'm gonna I'm gonna pull my flap pretty hard and press it like this, and we're gonna enclose that seam we just trimmed. nice. I think no buttons and buttons. Does that look blurry to you? This, fa this fabric is not playing nice with my camera, is it? All right, let's do this side. This is the fun one. We'll get the fun one. Shirt's gonna look nice though. I'm really liking that we're doing these fun details to kind of make it look less vanilla. Nothing's wrong with vanilla, as long as you add, you know, roasted almonds to it and chocolate chips. <laughs> Just fold in back that little corner so it doesn't sneak out the top. You hear me? That's my foot trying to get one stitch. <laughs> When they're this big, I'm like, oh, gotta be careful. No buttons, no buttons. Yeah, I do too. I, I think it looks really clean. Maybe he'll ask for them. I can always add it, right? So I'm just... Do we want this like right at the hem? I think I'm gonna do it down lower, like right here. Okay. This fabric is really nice to sew. Speaking of which, thanks to Hearts Fabric giving us this project to sew. I was pretty excited when they were like, um, do you want to sew another Merchant and Mills? And I was like, yeah, <laughs> I do. <laughs> um, and and uh, they said this is a new shirt. I don't know when this shirt came out. I, I sort of now wish patterns had a release date on them, which would be completely a selfish thing because I'm actually really curious. I think partly it's because of pattern chatter when we do the pattern review show. I'm like, is this new? But um, I sometimes, like I feel bad, like if this is kind of a new pattern, I'm sad that I missed it when it came out. All right, where's my other flap? It looks cute. Yeah, exactly. What is this word? Yeah. She's not over. I'm not over. I overdo it too. <laughs> exactly. 
I think you can you can add as much as you want as long as it's not all visible. That's why that's why I'm like, okay, we're gonna do it on the neck band. No one will see it unless he's, he he takes his shirt off. Better not be taking his shirt off, right? Um, we're gonna see it here, and we're gonna see it on the hanging loop on the yoke. That's it. Oh, and maybe on the hem because I might I might not be able to resist that. That was a good suggestion. All right, so I'm putting this right side down. I'm trying to get some rid of some of these threads because these little threads that come off your corners, those are, that's the, the devil in the details type stuff. That's the stuff that drives you crazy because like, see, this is just my top stitch thread, my bobbin and my top. And so I'm gonna, I don't want those too short so that they come undone. But I need them a little shorter so that they don't stick out of the side of the seam here. Those are the things that are really hard to trim after you're done sewing. Sometimes like no amount of cutting close gets rid of them. You still see the little end. Drives you crazy. And so parallel to your pocket edge. That's what's important here. Going parallel to your cut edge of your flap, that's great if it's straight, right? But going parallel to the top of your pocket is more important because that seam right here is going parallel to that. No one's gonna really see it. So if you're a little bit off, as long as this width is parallel, it won't look like it. Because, um, and that's how you can also compensate if your flap isn't very symmetrical. Usually I fold it in half and check. So, you know, I'll do something like this before I sew it and go, all right, am I setting myself up to fail you know, right now? Because I, I have a lot of trouble getting these little narrow pieces to be symmetrical when I'm sewing. All right, so now I'm just gonna pull this kind of taut and then roll it down. And then we're gonna enclose that seam because I trimmed it. I can feel kind of a, a little divot right here. You can see it. And now we're just trying to get a nice even seam allowance because it's visible. Did I run out of seam? Oh, no, I didn't. I like my needle to go one stitch off, but like right up against it. Oof, I cut it close. I didn't show this. So, okay, I was a little worried I sewed it shut. This one's a little closer than the other one. You really don't need a button and buttonhole with this, but look, this is what I'm talking about. See how this flap, if you were to put the button and buttonhole right here, it's nowhere near the hem of this. Not my preference. I did do a narrow seam allowance around here. So maybe it would have been a little more like this. That doesn't really change. That gets me no closer because you don't want to do it up here, right? This is the, I, it's, I hate flaps on pockets because of this. If you're going to do a, a closure. All right, we have a left and a right. Yeah, we do. Cute. This looks cute. This looks ready to wear. I'm telling you. <laughs> All right. Um, what I say was next. Yokes, right? Yeah, we get to do more decorative stuff. Let's get our back. Got our back, we got our yoke. And I'm gonna make a little hanging loop. This is a nice big piece. Maybe I'll save it. Sorry my chair's so squeaky. Where's that piece of selvage that we had that we've been playing with? Is it here somewhere? Oh, here it is, right here. I think I'll save that piece, just in case. All right, so we need this to be the center. How long we need this loop? Let's do this end down here. We don't need this loop to be any longer than that, so let's just cut this off. If we want that to be the center, that's gonna be really hard. If I fold it down the middle of that stripe, Maybe I stand a chance to get it in the middle. Look, I'm gonna do my seam allowance, or seam uh, length a little bit smaller. And try and get this. Okay, we can go to about right there. That'll work. 
Do you, Raquel? I used to do that too. I would love for pattern companies to mention the release dates, right? I said they don't want to. Uh, yeah, I know. That's exactly what I think too, Mullen. If you do a little due diligence, sometimes uh, the companies that have the built-in blog, then you can kind of tell because you can see the blog date. Otherwise, it's a deep dive in Instagram. Oh, that's nice, Terry. I like that. That sounds that sounds great. I love it on the inside of the fly. This is a very small. I don't know if I can turn this. Oof. I think I I think I just I don't know if I can do this, you guys. Let's try. This is really small. I didn't even do it a quarter of an inch wide. Oh, wait. Wait. Didn't I buy a tool for this? This is my tool. Oh, it was for elastic. That's what it was. Hmm. Can I get it? If I get it started, it'll be fine. I don't know about this. Let me try and get it started with my awl. Oh, I think I felt it go. Oh no, it hooked, okay. Oh, I got it, I got it, okay. Trying to keep my fingers not on this edge because then it'll just fray apart. The key with this is doing a little bit at a time. Don't get too excited. <laughs> I usually get, like, when I get to this point, I'm like, there's the end. Cool, now I'm done. But um, don't get too excited about it. At least now you know if it unhooks, you're okay. Whew. Whew. Okay. All of life is a video game, you guys. It's all mini challenges. I do know that technique. I was thinking that might be my backup plan. <laughs> the loop turner, it's really great because it's very fine, but this is the first time I think that the, it, my little thing was just a little too narrow, but the fabric is lightweight enough. Do I want it down the center? I think I do. My friend and I, the my friend Rhonda, um, who's the bread baker, <laughs> she's the one who made my wedding dress. She's a really, really fantastic sewist. She and I were going to start a company doing custom stuff, and we were going to do that. We were going to put things in the, the, the side seams and stuff, like whatever. I don't know. It kind of seems corny now, but... It was fun to daydream about it. And this was before the internet. <laughs> okay, I'm just trying to get my little stripe there in the center. It looks like a wiggly worm. I think that'll work though. Let's see if we can get this a little straighter by Manipulating it a little bit. Pull this this way. Yeah. Do the other side too. All right. There's no pleat. Right, Terry? All whole grain too. All right, so. There is a notch here. Let's find our center back. See that nice curve? This is perfect if you have a rounded back. <laughs> 
All right, do we want it like this? Or do we want it like this? Probably like that, huh? Because we could just have a little bit of it hanging out, hanging down. Seam allowance is right up to here, right? So like that. Or like this. I need more information, Terry. There's too much flat, like a <laughs> delay. Stripes on the bottom, stripes on the sides. Stripes on the, this is the stripes on the sides or stripes on the bottom. Bottom or sides. <laughs> Bottom. Uh oh, now we need more than one. More than, okay. I'm gonna wait for you guys to vote. Bottom, bottom, sides, bottom, bottom. Anyone else? <laughs> I like both ways, so I'm fine with either one. Oh no, Daniel, <clears throat> I've never seen you chat here and they, they, they're they already outnumbering you. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, let me pick the nicest spot of my little thing. I feel like this little spot of stripe is a little better. I think I can get a long enough piece like that. All right, I'm gonna Pack it on here. I'm gonna give myself a visual here because we are visual people here. Oops. Okay. Fiddly. So that line represents my seam line. So what do we think hanging it down like, I think that's, that's actually good. That's about a half inch. Let's make sure we can get it symmetrical. I like this, this is cool. Yard man now. <laughs> You're not the only guy here at least. <laughs> here she would say side. She, yeah, that's probably true, Shim. You're putting in a vote for Libby? Okay. <laughs> You're not just leaving your swimming with your back to him. You just how oh good thing you didn't hurt yourself. <laughs> Yeah, it got cool enough the last two evenings that um, I could open the windows in, in the evening and the coyotes were going crazy. And uh, my dogs were like, hadn't heard them for a little bit. So they were, they were going nuts last night. I was like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so we're gonna sew our sandwich here. Tasty yolk sandwich. Just 
just, it's curved, so I'm just being a little fussy, lining it up, and now I'm at that spot, so let's make sure we get our seam allowance nice and even. Not my strong suit when it comes to those fussy details. Let's see. Let's pull that thread. It's right here. And I saw one more. Yeah, it's right here. Actually, we'll just do a slightly bigger seam allowance. That's my tack right there that I'm seeing. You're so jumpy. I am too. I, I don't think of myself as being jumpy, but I do startle really easily. Just ask my office neighbor. He startles me once a day. He feels terrible about it too. All right. I still have some of this, this tacking. I'm going to get rid of it. I was a little too precise with my seam allowance when I put that on and uh, should not have done that. I should have put it inside the seam allowance, which I thought I was doing, but I was looking at my white line. There it is, okay. Do you have a shirt that's similar already, Terry? Or would you get this pattern, do you think? All right, let's go press this. We're taking our time this time. Usually I'm really buzzing through, I know. Hopefully that's not disappointing to you guys. So you can give it a nice tug. This is the back side. I am not following the directions with their yoke uh, installation, so I'm sorry if that's how you wanted to do it. But I think you'll find my way is a little less, um, is a little easier to do. I am trying to adjust this fold. There we go. I like the way that thing looks. <laughs> looks good. All right. Top stitch and then tacos. You can pick up the pattern, nice. You get 10% off from Hearts Fabric. You guys gonna tell me I bonked the face cam? I think you need like a, a mirror or camera system, Julie. And then if you start scaring them and filming it and posting it, <laughs> maybe, Maybe they'll change their minds. See, it's a cute little loop. All right, let's do our, let's have some tacos. <laughs> well, I'll just do one at a time. I don't know why I'm putting that there. Look at this curve. You see that? Such a, a really good example of when you line up your seam, make sure you line it up on the seam line. Don't line up your raw edges because then you'll get a jog in the neck, right? So right side, this is the way I do this. You don't have to do it this way. You can do the burrito method if you like that method. Um, uh, if you're new here, this is something I figured out when I was like 20 four, 23 years old, because I didn't like the way they showed you how to do it in big four patterns. So I was like, I'm just gonna cheat. And so I just put it right sides together like this. And then I sew it. <laughs> it's a little fiddly when you first line it up on that little corner. Get it all lined up. And now it's gonna help me. So now I'm just gonna take the bottom layer, middle layer. Those are gonna lay down really nice and easy. And then this top layer, we just need to line it up as we go. And don't stretch it, especially a fabric like this is, um, might want to a little bit. And then get all the way down here. And 
And then you just boop, pull it out like that. There we go. All right, let's do our other side. They sound evil. <laughs> Um, so the way I do this, I know it's hard to tell my right sides from my wrong side, but this is the right side of my shirt, and this is the right side of my back, and I put this right sides together like this, like I'm going to sew those shoulders. And I pick up the top two layers, take the under yoke there. So what I really usually do is I get, I take the time to line up these two right here, right? These two are going to be easy. And make sure you don't lose track of that. You're not sewing this edge, you're sewing that edge. And then now I just... Flip it right sides together like that. And same thing. Once I get it under the needle, the machine's going to kind of help me hold it in place. And so I'll, oh, this time I have the, the difficult edge on the bottom here. And the two easy edges on the top, I think, yeah. It doesn't matter if you go from neck or shoulder to whatever your, feels comfortable to you. pretty hard to pin the whole thing first too so just trust yourself I know you can do it there we go um, I'm gonna press this hi Ann how's it going w wait weren't you the one saying you're working oh no that was Suzanne <laughs> it's the inside press this first let's see how the outside looks How's it going? Oh, right, I'm flat felling. I can't forget that. Just gonna top stitch the shoulder. Whoa. Got a little bit of, well, that'll be okay. That's in the seam allowance right there. All right, what's next? I think we put our sleeves together. Wait, let's check. I'm trying to do it in the same order as the instructions. Is it this one? It's this one here. Uh, what do they have you do next? Missed the hanging loop. Oh yeah, I just finished it. <laughs> Let's see, we've done all of that. Okay, we're now we're down to the sleeve. Let's pull our pieces out. I thought we did the collar next. Wait. Oh, well, I'm glad you're off of work. That was the taco. <laughs> he loved the burrito. <laughs> we love all tacos and burritos here. <laughs> um, okay, now we're going to do a, a stay stitch around the neck sleeves. Okay, so I am going to break with the instructions here as far as the order. I'll still try and sew everything the same way they do. The reason I'm going to do that is because uh, dealing with your collar when the sleeves aren't on there will be a little easier. You'll have less to kind of um, wrangle under your machine. So, oh, it looks like they do they do a flat felt seam here. Oh, no, they don't. Oh, never mind. Okay, I was just kind of curious. So let's do the collar. I've only done one of these collars, and it's been a long time, so this should be fun. <laughs> Let me read this over. Mm -mm. Okay, so you assemble each collar and top stitch it. Oh, this is no big deal. Okay. All right, so we have our 
top collar, under collar, and then on your little stand, you're gonna have one that's interfaced and one that isn't. I interfaced both. Oh yeah, yeah, you interface both because this is kind of acting as the collar stand, right? So um, I only did the stripe on one, and this one is the inner collar stand. It gets sewn to the outer collar, so or top collar. So we're gonna put it on there because uh, that's what the collar does. All right, so we're gonna take this other collar stand here and uh, let me make sure I get these notches right because they, they said the center back knot. Oh, this is the center back knot. Okay, yeah, so the curve goes to the curve. I hope I get that. Did I do this? I may have misinterpreted that before. Okay, anyway. All right, so I can't see my notch anymore, so I'm just going to put it back in here. Put a little center notch here. Center notch right there. And we're just going to do this right sides together. This should be uh, really fun <laughs> because this curve here is uh, going to be a little hard to stay on your seam allowance. This is such a weird color. Okay. I'm going to draw my seam line in here. Why not? Right? We're not messing around here. Not to mention that the collar stand got interfaced. The under collar did not. So most likely the collar stand is going to be really finicky because it's probably shrank when I interfaced it. This is why I wanted to do a little bit of, of batch, batch fusing for my interfacing, and I forgot because I don't ever do that. It's a great idea though, because then you can iron your fabric before with the interfacing before you get the. Um, why is this not writing? It's, am I going the wrong way? There we go. That's better. And then oh, here I'll use this. This will work. I was looking for a color for, to do this. I never do this, do I? <laughs> it's actually, it's probably easier to go like this. Yeah, there we go. I wish the notches were down the center. Be more accurate. All right, look at me try harding for you guys. I don't really do that ever, do I? Do, do I? <laughs> Is it Lucilia or Lucelia? <laughs> That's a pretty name, no matter what it is. Oh, really? That's cool, Aisha. All right. So remember I was talking about lining up your seams on the seam line. This is going to be really important. So right here is my seam line. The Hera, I can't see it on this and I wanted it to be really visible. So we're going to line up there on there, right? So see how this edge is lined up here. That edge is lined up right there. And now we're going to start. This might be easier from with the collar on the top. So we'll see. And we need to get to right here is our non-negotiable spot right here. So we're going to line this up and we're going to pin it perpendicular so that we know it's lined up down here on the seam line. It's five eighths all over. They haven't said to do anything different. I really don't like it when instructions say five eighths unless otherwise noted, like the otherwise noted if it, if you're not going to note any other seam allowance, it is going to stay that the whole way. Don't tell me that you might note it differently because then I doubt everything, you know, and they just do that because they just copy and face paste the format from one pattern to another. I'm sure. Or this one, keep you on your toes. Okay. I made it. Okay. So I have another non-negotiable down here. So we're going to take that seam line 
and line it up there. I should have done this first, I know. <laughs> I like these little... Oh shoot, I just can't. It's too hard to line it up right now. See, my, my under collar really wants to wiggle. Okay. I'm just feeling underneath, making sure I don't get any tucks in there. I'll do the other one from the collar side, I think, and just to let you know if it seemed easier. All right. Is that a tuck right there? If you think you got, oh, see, look at that. You see how there's a little tuck right there? Uh, where is it? Right here. That's the tuck. Sorry. Um, it, it Usually those happen between where the needle goes in. It goes in and out of the fabric on either side. Don't take it out quite yet. Just kind of scratch it. Distribute that little piece of fabric there in between that stitch and it probably makes the tuck go away. See that? There is notches on this. Um, yeah, it's not working well on this. Yeah, right, Terry, exactly. All right. Do I want to press the seam up or down? Which way do they press the seam? I'm done with this page, aren't I? No, I'm not. Oh, they press it down. Okay. Oh, okay. Let's do our other one. <laughs> uh, it depends sometimes. These two are both interfaced. That usually when you need to draw up the fabric, um, you want that side to be toward the feed dogs because the feed dogs will kind of aid you in kind of easing the fabric on there. And in this case, that's what I did. So this is the uninterfaced side, right, down. This one's interfaced, so it's not going to be, it's going to be more rigid. Personally, though, it, for me, it depends on going convex to concave, and it, and it depends what will work better and be easier. This one worked just fine. I didn't have any trouble with this at all. This fabric's really lightweight too. So this one we'll try and do from this side and see if this having the, the concave on top of the convex is easier. Because sometimes it is. But I feel like it's not going to be because look, you see how you have to pull against that? It's probably going to be easier to go convex on top of concave like that and then you can walk around right so we'll try it you know I'm always willing to uh, sacrifice my project for you guys <laughs> these are the only this is the only colored utensil I have over here all my Crayola markers are on the other side of the room You know, if I'm drawing in the seam allowance, I'm nervous I'm not going to keep it on track, right? I don't know if you can even see that. Sorry. Can't we make this camera a little better? How about I just zoom in? No, don't do that. How about I zoom in? Meow. How's that? You like concave on bottom and convex on top. Yeah, right? Yeah. All right, so if we're gonna do this on the top, right? So this one, we want those seam allowance drawn on this piece, okay, on the side. Oh, this little ruler, not my go-to. It is over here though. I want the dashes down the center. I like how precise 
these the chacos are. All right, let's try it. So we're gonna line up the seam line right there. That's what that looks like. It's gonna look really wrong. <laughs> we're gonna line our notches up. Where's this notch? Oh, okay, we lost this notch. So let's put this one on. Um, make sure you line it up perpendicular. Otherwise you're going to rob yourself on one stretch of the fabric, like one length of it, and it's gonna be harder to sew in. You'll make one side easier and one side harder and it won't be lined up well. Just be honest with yourself. Concave is, yeah, convex. <clears throat> concave is, a, like think of a concave is got a cave in it. <laughs> yeah, exactly, Raquel, yeah. All right. Oh, this already feels so hard, much harder. But both these surfaces have been interfaced, so if anything is going to have shrunk. So I'm trying to keep it lined up directly across from the needle, like right here. It's really easy to want to like try and line up down here, but it's not ready yet. It, you can't really do that because it needs to meet here first. So that's why I, I push my fabric to the right because I'm trying to keep that lined up. And then I hold my under layer and I pull this to line up as I go. So now I'm getting close enough so I can hold this right here and really make sure. Oh, this is a lot harder. It's so much harder I might start over. I got it. Didn't feel good though. <laughs> I feel like I'm a little off on my seam allowance too. Yeah, so you want you want to do it the other way. You want it to be able the the feed dogs to kind of help you. struggle. I made the cargo shirt with interfacing on the top collars and straight then because I was using linen I had the iron on the linen set. <gasps> no. You know what Beverly? I switched. Is that the SF 101? I'm the boss. Mm. Yeah exactly. <laughs> All right and so then look you, what you really want to happen is that this edge here is going to line up with this edge. I'm not sure why they have this little like, that's not okay right there. Like, they probably did that thinking you need that. I'm not sure. Maybe, oh, probably because you fold it down. That's it. Oh, yeah, yeah, cool. All right, let's go iron this. <laughs> yeah, if you use the SF-101, Beverly, I've been having a lot of trouble with that, too. I switched to using Trico. Um, and these guys have a really great source from, what's it called? Fashion supply fashion sewing supply i think is where they've been getting their interfacing they haven't had trouble something happened with sf 101 during the panini something happened <laughs> rest in peace sf 101 <laughs> I sort of want to clip this edge. I'm going to definitely um, cut it down at the very least. Yeah, Terry's saying it very succinctly. We all hate it now. <laughs> We're mad at it. We broke up with SF-101. We sent that thing a Dear John letter.
shirt crisp. There you go. Yeah, I think that's what they've been talking about. Oof. Sorry, mate. I'm having an issue with my thumb right now. Oof. All right. Now we're going to top stitch it toward the collar or collar stand, sorry. That was a little close. Why does it feel? I think I just didn't iron it very well right there. And pull that over. Make sure I get it. There we go. Yeah, I just got a little blump in it when I ironed. Wasn't very paying good enough attention. Ooh, look at our little detail. It's gonna show up like that. Oh, really, Rachel? That's Pellon, that's a Pellon product. You just bought something on sale. That's a good idea, Beverly. Yeah, I, I use all kinds of things, you know, um, or um, cotton lawn, muslin, uh, the, the Trico. I feel like linen might be a little too wiggly. Unless you were putting it to another wiggly garment and you wanted it to like maintain that kind of really wiggly, you know, thing. Yeah, so. There's my little interior trim. This line should line up with that, but it's not, is it? <laughs> hmm. That's interesting. I was really careful about how I lined up my seam allowance. You guys all saw. Uh, so I don't know why that's just hanging down. So, all right, let's sew our collar together. I really thought that you were going to sew this, um, like you were going to sew how do I think you're going to do this? Uh, I thought you were going to sew these two together, the collar, and then put these two to, at the same time, like a sandwich. That's what I thought was you were going to have to do. And I was kind of like, ooh, this is going to be a deal breaker for people. Because I think that's how you would do it in a factory, is that they would sew the um, these two as a sandwich on this one. So you'd have to maintain... <laughs> Both of those curves on that color. That'd be a lot. I should have put this uninterfaced side down towards the machine. Look at that difference there. What what's going on with that? Is that my stellar cutting? Is that what's going on there? The heck? I think I'm gonna try and let it lay flat and just split the difference. The under collar should be smaller, not, not bigger by the way. <laughs> All right, we're gonna trim this puppy down. Um, trim around my corners. Am I using a short stitch length? I am using like 2.5 millimeters. Yeah, it better be 5 8 because they haven't said anything different. It is now. <laughs> Making me doubt. I'm using just a standard stitch length. 
Uh, eh? Eh? All right, we're going to attach the collar now. Which layers interface, top or bottom? Top collar always interfaced. Collar stands on this, both are interfaced. <laughs> Me too, Raquel. If you've ever watched my collar collar stand video, you know that I'm like, cut that off. I was, I thought about doing it during the cutting yesterday and then I forgot because we were just so caught up. <gasps> no, I knew that was going to happen. Dang it. And that's why you want a shorter stitch length right there. It's when you do stuff like that. Let me fix that. Sorry. I can't, probably can't see what I'm doing. I'm going to put that stitch length way down now. Reinforce my corners. This fabric's just a little too, mm, I, I guess you could say open weave, loose weave. Maybe loose weave is a better term. Yeah, it does seem big. It is big. No reason to have it this big. It makes hard, it makes those curves harder to sew. In fact, if you're making this and you're just kind of watching ahead and you haven't gotten to this point right here, trim these seam allowances down to quarter inch or three eighths at the most and then do it together. It, it'll help a lot maneuver the convex to concave curves to one another. There we go. That looks better, huh? Yeah, I trimmed it away. Which, wait, are you already answered that, right? Yeah, I'm not a big fan of um, when they say like, unless otherwise noted, and then they never note a different seam allowance. I'm like, just tell me that it's that throughout. Look at this mess right here I have. I should have made sure I got all the threads <laughs> through here. We're going to pull on that. Let's hope that's it. So we have this little thread right here. We're going to really carefully trim it. All right, so let's go and press this interesting collar. Oh, where are they? I usually do, but I've, I haven't sewn this pattern before or one of these kinds of collars in a really long time. So I'm not very familiar with Merchant and Mill, so I just thought I would do it the way they say, just in case. But now that I've sewn it, there's no mystery. Um, trim it down first. It's just better. It'll be easier to maneuver and get your curves and be more accurate, you know? I need to pull that corner out, but I'm not gonna use the seam ripper. All right, so your under collar should be a little smaller, which is kind of ironic because you interface the top collar, which kind of shrinks it in a lot of cases. And then it probably catches up in size to your, <laughs> your under collar. Your under collar catches up in size to it. So this is how my collar is gonna look like this when it's being worn. There's the vision. It's a big Chahunkin collar though. Chahunka. Let's roll this and get that seam right on the edge. I really need to pull this corner out though. Let me just go get the all. I mean, 5 eighths is an industry seam allowance, it, a home sewing industry seam allowance. I used to hate 5 eighths seam. Now I really like it because I, I can do things like flat felled and French seams. My stitching is a little like 
right there, but we're not going to take any chances. All right, so you can you see that um, little edge right here of my top collar peeking to the underside? So here's my top collar, and you can see a little bit wrapped to the underside. I'll show you on the other camera. That's what you want. You want that to happen. Let's get rid of some of these wrinkles now that I have it the way I want it. They're, those wrinkles are really not budging, are they? In centimeters, yep, that's true. All right, so see, look, there's your, you want that. Because then your under collar doesn't sneak to the right side. Especially like, say you were doing like a fun print and you know, only someone lifting up the collar will know, but you don't want it to show. Or maybe it's white and this is black and you don't want like, like it's fine if you wanted a little white edge on your black collar, right? But you would put that in there differently. You wouldn't rely on the under collar to do that kind of work for you. Um, and you wouldn't probably get it even. So it would be, you'd have that little hit here, but not here. <laughs> so you, you don't want to do that. Oh, uh, you know what? I was going to top stitch this onto the center front placket, right? I'm going to do something kind of interesting with the top stitching, I think. So we're going to leave this. Oh, plus don't top stitch it at all. Uh, yeah, don't top stitch it at all because this is like a camp collar. We're installing this kind of like a camp collar. All right. We're installing this like it's a collar stand only. All right. So um, this is going to be a little different than the instructions as well. So this is the inside of my garment. All right. Let's actually get oriented better. So this is the outside of my garment, right? You know that this is the top collar. So put your collar wrong side to right side like this. Okay. Just so you don't get confused. Okay. And so now we're going to flip this over and that means we're going to flip the collar over too, whoop, like this. So your top collar is going to go to the inside of your garment. So we're going to sew it to the inside and then flip it around and sew the outside. So let me find my center. I somehow did not do any of the centers on this thing. There's like no notches on this. And I think that they're there, but they do drill holes. I, I don't want to do drill holes. Look at all these little holes all over. They're everywhere. Here, 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 here. It's kind of nuts. All right, so I, I like to start the center and then we're gonna find our front here. And we want this to line up. So line up your seam edge here with the line right here, right? Don't do this at an angle like this. You want to line up the seam allowance properly. And we're only going to be pinning the under collar Wait, am I doing this right, right? <laughs> the under collar layer only, all right? So I'm trying to get that seam right to that notch there. Pull this away. The way the instructions are is the opposite. They're gonna go from the outside of the garment to the inside of the garment, and this is gonna be a lot easier. If you're anywhere near like the beginning stages of doing collars and collar stands. Do it this way. I promise I'm not making it harder. I'm making it easier for you. So do it from the inside to the outside. I don't like how these little threads right here are showing. I don't want those to sneak out of my center front right here. So let's identify what those are if we can. It's just my back stitch. Let's see if we can. I'm not sure I can include that. So I'm just trying to trim it down a little bit. Cause it's on the lower part, not here. So I'm not sure. All right. Let's open this up again. Line up that seam right there. Okay. 
All right, and then again, this is a gigantic seam allowance. There, there's probably a shoulder notch on here, but I did not see one. It was drill holes. I did not do any drill holes, so. Usually you would match up all of your things. I go from center back, center front, and then the shoulder, and then I do in between each of those. So if you have all the drill holes on there, great. <laughs> match those up. <laughs> You can tell it's going to be hard because of this massive seam allowance. It's kind of a bummer. All right. I'm going to try and sew this on now. So just to reassure you, right, this is the um, outside of, no, I did do this wrong. Okay, I had a feeling, oh, good thing we checked. The whole time I was doing this, I was like, I usually don't see this side of the collar, but maybe I'm just confusing myself because of, of this little contrast thing I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we want our top collar to be like this, right? Yeah, so it is this one that goes to the inside like this. Yeah. Okay, let me get you oriented again, sorry. All right, inside of the shirt, is facing up, right? This is the inside of the shirt. The under collar is also facing up. We're gonna do the outer collar to the inner shirt. How many times have I said that exact sentence? All right, so then let's reassure ourselves so you know I'm not putting you astray. There you go. That's how it goes, right? This is the right side, right side, right? Outer collar to inner shirt. <laughs> no, I, the whole time I was looking at it, I was like, I thought it was the opposite. But maybe it's just this little collar stand throwing me off right now. Trust your instincts. Always trust your instincts. That's why I was like, let's just check. <laughs> just check. You never know. I don't really like seam ripping this kind of fabric either, so. All right, so again, I do the center back, I do the center front. Line up that seam right on that stopping point of the placket right there. Line up your drill holes, if you have them. The ship kind of sailed for me now that I've got it all sewn together, so we're evenly distributing this. I do not know why there's this jog in the collar stand that's really annoying. I, might, I probably should have trimmed it down because look, it's gonna hang past my edge here. You don't, yeah, I don't know why it's there. It's just, it's just something, it's just the little inaccuracy, that's all. So, not on our part. All right, so if you get a little nervous about sewing these, um, what you can do is start from the center back, go to the front, flip it, and go center back to the front. We're going to go the whole way, though, because um, I don't really like flipping it when I have all this looseness here. I don't want that to be on top. So open up your collar, kind of force it to go past. This is that center front collar edge right here. See, here's the collar edge right here. We're going to pull this apart. I, I kind of, sometimes I like the seam allowance, like including the seam allowance in the seam. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I push it away. Uh, it just depends on the fabric. If it's really, really thick and you're having trouble wrangling it, put it out of the way. It's going to get included at some point, right? Doing this from the collar side is a little tricky. I can feel the divot of where my center front is. I'm just going to do this and check it, though. Yeah, I don't really like that. Maybe what I'll do is start it on the right side. I'm going to start it from this side. I'm just going to do the center front. Like that. I'm going to do the other side too. So I pulled the collar open. See, it's open. I line up that seam right on the center front notch there, like 
this. And we're just going to sew that little section. And now I'm going to sew it from the collar side the rest of the way. This is the weirdest collar installation ever. <laughs> All right, here we go. Get their shirt straight out. I'm going to hold them separately again so I can pull and manipulate the collar around the neckline. But you see this little jog of this edge? That is hanging off. And I don't know what's going on there. I don't know why they did that. Because it makes it harder. Trim it off. Let's see, if I, let's see if I can get it on here. But I would trim it off next time. It's the bummer about that too is that because I have this contrast panel here, it's really going to be obvious if I don't sew it in nice and neat. So I'm doing it outside last, yeah. That is just not going to make it. Oh, I forgot to do my stay stitch around the neck. Sorry. We talked about it and then I forgot it. I feel a little bump, so I'm just working on it before I sew it in there and immortalize it. I'm also trying to get my center to my center and it's not wanting to do that. Okay. Phew. Rather than holes, would Taylor's tax help a newbie like newbie like me? Holes. Holes? Oh, you mean the drill holes? Yeah, you could do Taylor's tax. Be nice if they were just notches. There's some definite Taylor's tax fans in this chat, I know. So basically this is hanging off the edge a quarter of an inch because when you get to here, see, it's like, it's like hanging off that mount right there. All right, home stretch. Let's see here if we can get this. We've already sewn the center front, or I have, right? So see what I'm doing? I'm just kind of sliding it in there like that, making sure I don't get any tucks, and evenly distributing it. I feel like I'm going to get a tuck right where that's sewn in there. There we go. Oh, there's the, it's the placket ridge. Ooh, I barely got that hit of selvage. <laughs> there we go. All right. This massive <laughs> seam allowance. It fell down low right here. Let's pull that up. Yeah, it's not very um, even. See right here, I pulled it up. So I'm going to even it out a little bit because I'm going to be a little bit picky this time. Oh, and my stitch length is still really small. I'm just going to see how it goes up right here. I'm just going to pull it down just a tiny bit because I'm being picky. And it'll be easy to do. Maybe if it wasn't easy to do, I wouldn't do it. <laughs> Except that my stitch length was real tiny. Okay, so we can just pull that down, let it relax. And then let's pull this up right here and get this seam allowance more accurate. I might just take out this whole section. You know, maybe if this neckline was stay stitched, I might give it a try to sew with a neckline up the whole way. I would trim down the seam allowance though first. It's just so much. It's going to be really hard to do it from this side up. 
But you know, there's other pitfalls of doing it the other way where you can't see this happening, right? And it, it doesn't help that there's this extra hanging off of the collar stand. I don't know what's going on with that. I'm about to trim it off once I get this sorted because um, we're gonna turn it under and now and edge stitch it. We're, this is the right side of the shirt that's facing up now. All right, so let's try and work it in here. Blend in with that. Pull the collar out. The collar can slip in. little bit, little bit, adjust, adjust, adjust. <laughs> Lifting my presser foot up and just pushing the little bumps of the fabric to ease it in. There we go. That looks better. That's still going up like that, so maybe we'll just leave it. But see all that ruffling there? Stay stitch could have helped that. All right, we're gonna um, trim this neckline down a little bit. A little nervous. I'm just gonna do it without the collar first. So it's just the shirt. Mark that center again, right there. These big seam allowances are more trouble than anything. So now this gets turned and lines up just like that. Maybe I'll just leave the seam allowance of the collar. All right, so this is the under collar facing up. This is the right side of the garment, right? And so now we're just going to turn under the collar edge and edge stitch it. And so what's great about this is that you can see everything you're doing, right? It doesn't really matter where that stitching lands on the inside because it's on the inside. I mean, it's nice if it lands on the collar, but this is a lot easier than doing it the other way where you really want it to land on the collar. And the, the best part about this is that this is, the collar turns down over this, so no one's gonna see this, so. This is how I do waistbands, cuffs, collar stands, all of it. <laughs> I was doing yokes like this for a while until I was like, wait a minute, I'm just gonna try sewing this right sides together. <laughs> I feel like most of um, sewing Raquel is fabric handling, you know? Let's iron this. Give this, press the collar seam up into the collar. I'm, I think I might clip it. But I don't know. I don't really need to if it's, if it gets to go up into the collar. I'm glad we did this little placket seam on the right side. It adds a little interest there. You know, there's my center seam and I clipped that one there. So it goes right here. But we also, oh, 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 wait, this is actually one, another tip here. Well, I'll do this at the machine, but I was just kind of deciding, do I want to trim this? But I don't think I'm gonna, 
All right, I have another tip for you. All right, so when I do things like this, especially cuffs, waistbands, and collars when they're narrow, I'm gonna pin along, I'm gonna get this nice and flat the way I, I want it to be when it's all done. And we're just gonna pin like away from that edge, right? This me makes it so that when now I, when I pull on this edge and turn it under and, and pin it, it can't go past this point. Like I can't over rotate the collar and do, you know, pull like that, right? It gives us like a backstop, you know what I mean? Oh, that's awesome, Julie, yeah. All right, so now it makes it a lot easier to pin too. I sort of get it going. I'm just not sure this is going to fold on itself here, the collar. It's such a wide seam allowance. I'm sorry I'm complaining about it a lot, but you're gonna see why it's gonna be a problem in just a second. Like getting this to lay flat right here. So this little edge right here needs to splay out and it can't, you know? All right, let's just take a look at it here. See if I can get it to lay in there flat. I open up the collar and press everything in there. You know what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna clip a little bit right here alongside the seams and let it relax a little bit. So yeah, open it up, press that seam up into the collar. A pin cushion is in a really sorry state right now. <laughs> it fell, so now they're all mashed in <laughs> to the pin cushion, so it makes it hard to grab them. And um, they're not like organized on there. Uh, I like certain ones near each other. <laughs> like that. Okay, so I'm just going to clip this again just a little bit right along. So I'm doing it right along the seam of the collar. Not all the way down, just a little bit. Just to make it release. Pull apart the collar like this. Pull it down. Let it know who's boss, like what you want it to be. Position it, like place it where you where you want it. <laughs> I'm pretty pragmatic, but there are certain things I'm just like, why, why? Do you not sew a lot? Like, why would you do it that way? <laughs> That's what I wonder. I'm like, do they just not sew that much? <laughs> Which is kind of a crazy accusation to make, right? To a pattern company. <laughs> and I'm pretty unfair. <laughs> Someone left a really nice review of Merchant and Mills on my cutting video yesterday um, and just said just really how lovely the people were there to deal with when they've, they've called and talked to them or had a question about something or maybe it was by email, I'm not sure. Um, and uh, that was cool. I, I love that. But I have mad respect for all pattern companies, even if their patterns like kind of drive me crazy. It's not easy to do. It can't, it, nobody's making like a million dollars on having patterns <laughs> either. Okay. The side obviously looks, can you see? I have those little caves. <laughs> so we're going to have to finesse that. Um, but remember, it's going to look like this when it's done, right? It's going to, it's good, the break point's going to be right here. It's going to cover all that up. You're going to get a little tuck right there. So where you want your needle to land, you know, we want, I put this tuck just past the seam there. And where the needle goes in here is, you know, where it comes out on this side. So you want to pay attention to where it is if you really want the needle to land like only on the collar. It's not going to land only on the collar unless you are really doing a good job of being precise with all of your cutting, your sewing, your seam allowance, and your fabric is really tightly woven. That helps a lot. 
or if you put this fold right at the seam line, like you don't go past it, like I'm going just a bit, a little past so you can't see it when it's sewn. It's either that or you stitch a little far to the right of your fold, which doesn't look the greatest, right? All right, so what I'm thinking is I'm gonna come up from the hem along the fold here, go in and then no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to, I'm going to sew my collar shut. I was just getting ahead of myself. All right, so let's go. I really don't like, um, this is like a puzzle. Can I do this all in one stitch? Usually when I sew these shut, I start at center back. I like my back tack to be right here. Oh, we forgot the label. We forgot the label. Wah. Do we want to add a label? We kind of want to add a label, right? Um, I usually start at the center back and I go all the way around the collar. I keep my back stitch right here. I don't put it at the front here. You, it depends on how attractive your back stitch is or the bobbin. Or if you have a problem and you have to take this apart, taking it apart at a really like prominent visually spot, visual spot right there is a kind of an issue. So it can be an issue. Um, I designed all these labels for menswear and I just haven't done anything with them and I really just should just for my own sake because I just you know they just you know my husband doesn't want that <laughs> my husband doesn't want any of these he, he, he's a very like totally chill dude you know, but he don't, he don't want this. He gets me. I really should just finish those and make myself a few because I've been, I could have used like 10 of them this year, <laughs> you know? All right, we're gonna put this little label right here. I think I like the tools. Let's put the tools up. Okay. Now I forgot there's a sewing part too. I better not do all of my sewing today, huh? We'll stop here once I get this done. I was wondering why my stomach was growling too. I'm like, huh, I'm not hungry already. This went so quick. I'm just putting my label in, so we're just gonna sew this real quick. Ooh, I hope I didn't just create a problem. <laughs> Okay, it's not straight, I don't think. Oh, it's really not straight. Oh no, you guys, look at this. <laughs> How did that happen? My goodness. I did, I did create myself a problem. Right, Terry? I always do when it's things like this because it's not the final seam, you know? I really need to tack it in there, like do the stay stitch, tack it in there then. These are my labels, Kathleen. You can get them on my website. I sell, I sell, uh, I think four labels. Well, oh, I should say, I don't sell the ones with me on them. I don't sell this, but I do sell Where are they? Well, I sell the knit print. I sell plants that are two-sided, right? And then I sell flowers. They're two-sided, but just different colors. And then there's a machine. Where the heck's the machine? <laughs> oh, here they are. I sell a machine and on the back are the tools. 
you get two-sided labels, like you can use them for whatever, so. <laughs> I don't have mine on there though. I don't think anyone wants my face on there. <laughs> so, okay. I'm just gonna take out like seven eighths of it, almost all of it, and then yoink it up. <laughs> So that it's straight. <laughs> Hi, Ray. How are you? I'm like hot and sweaty right now. That's better, right? <laughs> to make sure. I hope it is. This stripe is giving me that optical illusion, you know? I'm really forcing it up there like this. Sheesh. Okay. I didn't trim down this neck seam, so it's really wide right there. I feel like I created another issue. Maybe not. Should have put that seam ripper one with the naughty word on it. All right. Where was I? Now I have so much more stitching to cover up with my, um, with my, uh, collar. I need to move my fan. All right. All right, back to my little, remember the puzzle where you had to draw a house with a little triangle roof? It was a square with a triangle roof and it had the X in the square and you had to draw that without lifting your pencil. That's what I want. I want continuous line stitching for this, but I want to include it my center front here. So what if I, if I went like this, hmm. I don't want to back stitch right here. That's my problem. I went up this and around and around. Okay, I have an idea. All right, we're going to do this from the hem. I'm going to, because I really don't like a back stitch at the center front there. You don't have to do this. I would go around your collar perimeter, but you, you have to remember that that's your under collar. Usually we're doing it on the collar stand, so it's not so, such a, a big deal. All right, so I'm going to turn my corner here. Turn my corner. I'm gonna do one more stitch my whole shirt up here. <laughs> That's awesome, Terry. All right, so I'm going onto the collar edge. I'm pulling it down towards my needle. The, fans, the, fa the fan is one of the best inventions ever. This is the loose area of my collar, so I know I'm not falling on the inner collar, unfortunately. I'm just using my awl to push that looseness to kind of ease it in there. All right, hold my shirt, more of my shirt up here. The awl is my friend here. 
really holds it firm. It feels really strange to sew on this kind of collar stand. I think the thing I like about it is that it provides a even thickness across kind of. I don't know how to put it. Um, All right, so now we're to the other front. Did I just run out of bobbin thread? Oh, that's great. <laughs> I love that, Terry. I have a little jiggity jog there. Um, I hemmed these shirts for my dad yesterday and they're <laughs> really funny. So my mom, some of you have probably seen this. I've never seen this before, but um, my mom got, she ordered these custom Hawaiian <laughs> shirts and I'm laughing because you just gotta laugh when you see them. Um, I'm kind of hesitate to show them to you guys, but she got a, like, there's two different ones and one has one of their dogs who passed away in the foliage. <laughs> and the other one is the other dog, the dog they have now. And it was super large. But the interesting thing about these is that they're sublimated. I'm pretty sure they're sublimated. I don't know if you guys know what that is. It's like it's like screen printing, but but so much more because they will print the cut of the, the garment, like they print the garment onto the fabric. So you would see the shape of the, yeah, that's Terry from the Guild, Kathleen. Um, they will print the whole pattern piece on to the fabric and it gets cut out. Well, like they do with cycling jerseys because you can always screen print so close to the edges. Anytime you see screen printing that continues off is um, a, a much more expensive process and a lot of times it can't be done in certain cases. So you have to do sublimation. So, and this is like, printed all over, <laughs> it's, it's the fabric. But they printed the button and buttonhole placement directly onto the fabric with the printing of the tropical print. <laughs> so, okay, there we go. That's our, that's our under collar and the outer of the garment, right? And so now let's look at how the inside looks. Not too bad, it's my inside. I have a little, that's right there is a little thread poking out of my seam. And this is how it would look when it's on. I like the contrast. What do you think? I like it, the little neck band hit. It's, it's crooked, very crooked though. Like my sewing isn't bad, I must have cut it crooked. But I like it. And then see, that's how I did my little top stitch like that. Oh man, my camera hates this fabric. All right, so I'm gonna sew my collar now, my top stitch my collar. Am I gonna top stitch my collar? Yeah. But where are we gonna start? Are we gonna top stitch the collar? We are, we are. Maybe what I'll do is start like right here because when the collar is down, you wouldn't see my back stitch then. I'm gonna start like right here. We could even do like something kind of cool. Like um, I was thinking actually of doing a second row, all the, like a second row here and then coming up. Let me show you, I'm gonna do that. Let's, I'll show you what I mean. Just for something fun, because it, it'll be hidden in this right here. So we can put our back stitch right here. I gotta clear the decks here before I throw all my tools on the ground when I turn. And I'm doing this from the top collar side, so this is the side that will actually show. Mm. 
No, 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 you do not do that. Oh, man. Bummer. How close did I get over there? I got pretty close. What happened there was my fabric went down into my feed dogs, so. <clears throat> so I'm just doing a really narrow stitch down here at the bottom and kind of widening it when I get to this little section right here because it's hidden in that contrast like that. This is the underside of the collar. We'll get rid of this back tack here. So then we have the stitching around the collar without the back stitches showing like that. Oh, thanks. Thanks, you guys. Nora goes by Kathleen. Right, Kathleen? Or is, I think I was calling her Kathy for a bit and I was wrong. <laughs> I thought she was the one that told me I go by Kathy. <laughs> All right. This is where we're at. Let me zoom out for you. So when you do these little tricky top stitching things, I'm definitely not doing like a couture or ta tailoring style, like right? It's I'm definitely cutting corners like that. But if you pay attention to what's going to be showing to the world, you can have you can kind of you know bend the sewing to your will in that way, right? So this doesn't look the greatest on the inside, right? But no one sees that while he's wearing it. <clears throat> if you lift up the collar, yeah, you would see my double line of stitching, but he's not going to lift up the collar, and the collar covers it completely up, right? So this way I focused on just the top stitching that shows. That doesn't show, this does show. If it's like this, it's not going to do that maybe, but maybe it will. Maybe I would fix that a little bit. So just focus on those areas that are going to be exposed. I don't know about amazing. Might look better on camera, but <laughs> it looks pretty good. This fabric's a dream to sew with. <laughs> it, it's very, it lends itself to very crisp, um, edges, right? <laughs> and the white top stitching kind of emphasizes that. That's another thing, like if you have a wiggly seam, the top stitching is really what's going to draw the eye. So um, if your top stitching is a little wiggly, you're going to notice that more than you're going to notice that you, you know, didn't get your collar point turned perfectly, right? So cool. All right. So Saturday, I'm going to put the sleeves on and do the sleeve placket and the hems. That's not much. We did a lot today. This isn't a very complicated shirt. So great. <laughs> yeah, that's so true, Ray. Exactly. So thanks, you guys. Yeah, and thanks to Hearts for giving us this project. Oh, and then here's the back. Let's look at the way it looks in the back. We have the little loop here. Nice curve. You could do something really western-ish with this yoke. I feel like with the shape of it. So. Oh, yeah. I'm going to kind of look at the. I thought these buttons were black in my mind and I love the idea of that. But that was a, a Dirindo Melolo that I made for hearts and they gave me black <laughs> buttons. I think black buttons would look really nice on here. Do these work? You know? Thanks, Sydney. Cool. All right, well, thanks for coming, you guys. Thanks for all the input. I really appreciate it. I love hearing your opinions and suggestions. It's great. That's what the live stream is all about. Cool, Terry. Yeah, I know. I kind of want to make one in like a corduroy. That sounds really satisfying. You know, like a wide whale corduroy. So did I make the loop? Yes, with the selvage. It was a little tricky, but yeah. I made the loop with a piece of selvage. Um, oh, and I also did the little tag right here with a piece of selvage. And then the, 
I cut one neck band in the selvage, which that's why it's wiggly. I didn't do a very good job of that. <laughs> Probably should have, uh, have interfaced that before I cut it. It would have been a lot straighter. <laughs> so cool. All right, you guys. Thanks for coming. Absolutely. Thanks for coming, Daniel, and participating. I really appreciate it. All right. I'll see you guys on Saturday. Same time, same place. 11 a.m. Pacific, it's already um, scheduled on the live stream, so you can click it and get a notification if you like that sort of thing. So 